and welcome to another episode of Fubar. Today we are continue talking about reinvent launches, my favorite reinvent launches of 2021. I know we are in 2022. But well, <laughs> reinvent was just in December. Uh, today I want to talk about Dynamo Infrequent Access class. And you will be like, that that's cool, but what it means? Well, let's go back. <laughs> so yes, you all know Dynamo, we can be uh, for sure that. And Dynamo basically uh, allows you to store data. And until reinvent, it only had one storage class. Dynamo storage class, standard storage class. We didn't know the name, there was no name. Uh, it has a cost for you to store the data. Now in reInvent, uh, they will announce a new type of storage class. And this means now it's called infrequent access. So what this storage class means that it is similar like if you're familiar with S3 storage classes, it has different types of classes according to your uh, use. And in Dynamo it's similar. So the infrequent access is as the name says, <laughs> for use uh, of infrequent access. So if you have data that you need to be uh, you need to retrieve very fast, like with the same performance that you expect from Dynamo, but you're not going to retrieve very often, then infrequent access might be the right access class for your table. Uh, because in infrequent access, I will call it standard EI. I hate acronyms and they sound very weird in my mouth, but, but bear with me. Uh, with this new class, uh, basically the storage part of storing in Dynamo is cheaper. It's up to 60% cheaper. But what is expensive is the access to the data. So those get and, and, and other operations into the table. So if you have data that is frequently accessed, then when you do the math, the normal standard class is more cost effective. But if you have data that is not that accesses that much, then your infrequent access is more um, valuable. So let's put it in an example. So imagine you're making Instagram. Yes, you know, the social media where there's all these little pictures. The most normal thing is that people, when they open somebody else's profile, they look at their last 10 photos. Unless you're a stalker, you don't go and see what that person uploaded in 2009 and you don't like those photos. Please don't like photos from 2009. I don't know if Instagram was there by then, but don't like that old photos. That's very creepy when you get those notifications. But in general, people open somebody's profile, they look at the latest photos and they're satisfied with that. That's the normal behavior. That's the standard behavior. But then you have all these weird people that want to know what those friends or persons they follow were doing in 2015. <laughs> and they go back and back and back in their timeline. For those use cases, the standard is not that good because the amount of people that are going to see those old photos is very small. It's just limited to those weird people that really are interested in the people's past. So then it's great to store your old pictures if you were that Instagram corporation to store those pictures in the new storage class because you will save a lot of money and basically you will pay more when those weird people want to look at those pictures from 2015 and then it will be as fast for them to get access to those pictures, but they will not be like in your main library. So a lot of customers were working in that kind of way where they were storing the most frequent access uh, data in and Dynamo, and then they were having these uh, solutions where they were transferring data into S3 or more cost efficient uh, data stores. So for these pictures that you were like not really showing now to a lot of customers. Maybe they have them in S3 where storage is cheaper and they need to have multiple APIs to in, your, in their application to know well if the a photo is old or is new or whatever, just pick it from here or pick it from there, like more complex logic, you know? So now with this storage class, you can have everything in Dynamo and you can save a lot of money. So let me show this in an example because I think by now you are more confused than uh, uh, you were before. So this example is going to simulate that um, Instagram application without the Instagram part, because I'm not going to do Instagram. It will be a backend simulation. So we'll have two tables. We will have uh, table one and table two. 
because you know me. The first table uh, will have all our uh, current data. And there uh, we have a lambda function that will save into that data, into that table. The interesting thing of this uh, table one is that uh, it has a TTL. If you don't know, TTL means time to live, and that's a feature of Dynamo where you can set uh, what is the um, time that an item is going to live uh, in that uh, in that table. Each item has different times to live, and you basically configure it when you upload the item. So you can say that this image will have uh, one minute of life <laughs> span and then it needs to get deleted and this will happen automatically by Dynamo. So this is a great feature from Dynamo. This first table also has Dynamo streams enabled. So whenever a new uh, an item is deleted from the system, then it will send a message also when it's created because Dynamo streams. So that's uh, the first part. Then there is a lambda function, a second lambda function that is listening to the data stream, the Dynamo stream, and it's getting triggered only when there is a delete, a remove action. And how I'm doing that with eval filtering that I explained you a couple of videos ago. So go and check that one out. Uh, basically, uh, whenever there is a new remove, this lambda function gets triggered. And what it does, it grabs that data and poof, put it in another table. And this table, this second table, what it has, it has the infrequent access storage class. So we are moving the data from one table to another and everything happens automatically. So let's see this in action because maybe now you are less confused. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe and all these things that YouTube like because I like making this type of demos. So. We have two functions, as I said, the first function gets triggered with an API gateway. We are just putting things into the first table. We have seen this many times, nothing weird, nothing out of the ordinary, the code is available in GitHub. The first table, it has uh, the time to leave a specification. So we have an attribute called TTL, uh, where we are going to specify the time that each item has to leave, and then the stream enables for the new and the old images. So when we delete, we can see the image. Then we have the second uh, Lambda function that is, um, it gets triggered when there is something in the stream of Dynamo and it has a filter enabled. So it has a filter criteria to remove um, data. So whenever uh, something gets removed from Dynamo, it will trigger this Lambda function. Nothing else will trigger this Lambda function, only remove uh, events. Great. And the second table, what it has, it has the uh, storage class uh, configured. So it has the new uh, standard infrequent access class configured there. And one thing to have in mind is that you can change between storage classes. It's okay, it's no problem. All the APIs work the same way. Everything works the same way. Mm, there is not much change between them except the storage class. So if you need to change an existing table into the new one, you can do it. If you want to go back, you can do it. Good, so this is our um, kind of uh, <laughs> infrastructure. And then if I open the second table, you can see there that there is the uh, standard EI configuration and we can switch back and forth, as I was saying. Our code is very simple. One puts something into the database with the TTL. So we have this, uh, the, the, the date now plus 60 seconds, so very short time to leave. And then we send something into uh, our table. So if we go, and see what it's inside the table. Then we can uh, basically see that we have one item. I will put more because uh, it's easier or it's nicer to them when there are more, but one is enough. One thing to have in mind with TTLs uh, and Dynamo is that it doesn't happen exactly at the time that it says. So if you want to know what is a TTL, you can go to the view items and there you have this epoch. So that's what we are inputting in the um, in the table, we have to put it in this epoch format and this will transform it. Uh, we can see the exact uh, time in all the different time zones there. So that's something to have in mind. And one thing to have in mind with TTL with Dynamo is that it's not time comes, item disappears. No, this happens in the background. This is a background process. So what happens is that this background process runs kind of 
some time uh, and it will see if the time to leave it's expired, it will remove the item. So it's not that the item magically disappears at the time of the TTL hits, it might take a few more minutes than you expected. So having that in mind, you need to wait. <laughs> there is a lot of waiting here for this demo to work. So while you wait, I will have a cup of coffee and I see you in five minutes. We are back and what happened now is that uh, we can start seeing something in our table. So uh, if we go to the first table, then we will see that some item was kind of uh, starting to get removed and that should trigger the uh, second lambda because the second lambda only triggers when uh, something got removed. So that's good. So if we go to the second table, <laughs> my namings are so good. Uh, give me a like for my namings. Uh, you can see that there is things in there. So this is our old data. And here I'm just throwing the data like that, Boomba, inside the second table. You could do some nice producing and have exactly the same structure in your old table and new table. That's fine, but I'm lazy. And I'm just throwing everything into there, creating a new ID and everything like that. So uh, we can see a few seconds ago, this uh, second function was a uh, trigger and basically uh, there's a lot of logs because I log everything. Uh, but yeah, everything is working. So that's great. And the more time we wait, the more items will get deleted from the first table and we'll get moved to the second table. So you will see a lot of action in here. And yeah, that's it. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please don't give a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and oh, you know, this whole shabang. You, I always repeat it. And yeah, I hope you have a great day, and I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao!